Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to see a brief history of database applications. Due to the change in requirements each day and also due to the evolution of internet, new types of databases have emerged. First, let's look into the early database applications using hierarchical and network systems. These early database systems were based on three database models. The hierarchical database model or the hierarchical systems, network model based systems and the inverted file systems. They were mainly based on the hierarchical model and the network model. A hierarchical database model is a data model where data is organized into a tree-like structure starting from the root node. This model is the first database model created by IBM in the 1960s. Now to solve the shortcomings of the hierarchical database model, network database model was created. But this model did not become dominant though it was created to solve the drawbacks of the hierarchical database model. One of the main problems of the early database systems was it was not very flexible to develop new queries and also reorganizing data was difficult when changes were made to the requirements of the database applications. Another drawback of the early systems was that it provided only programming language interfaces which made it time consuming and expensive. These early database systems were implemented on large and expensive mainframe computers and they were implemented in the mid 1960s through 1970s and 1980s. So this is about the early database applications using hierarchical and network systems. Next we have providing application flexibility with relational databases. Relational Databases or RDBMS was proposed by EF Cord and a relational database organizes data into tables which can be linked or related based on the data. High level query language was introduced in the relational data model which was an alternative to the programming language interface which was used in the early database systems. And because of this high level query language, it was more easier and quicker to write new queries. Relational databases were meant to provide flexibility to quickly develop new queries and also to reorganize the database as per the change in requirements. The performance of the early experimental relational systems or the relational systems that were developed initially that is developed in 1970s and also the performance of the commercial RDBMS that were developed in 1980s were quite slow since they didn't use proper search techniques. But with the introduction of new storage and indexing techniques and also better query processing, the performance of RDBMS improved. Gradually, relational databases became the dominant type of database systems and now it exists on all types of computers. So that is about the relational databases providing application flexibility in comparison to the early database systems. Next, let us look into the object-oriented applications and the need for more complex databases. The emergence of object-oriented programming languages led to the development of object-oriented databases. These object-oriented databases incorporated many of the features of the object-oriented programming languages like the data abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance. The use of this model was limited because of its complexity, though initially they were considered a competition to the relational database. Now they are mainly used in specialized applications only like the engineering design, manufacturing systems, etc. So this is about object oriented databases. Now moving on, next we have interchanging data on the web for e-commerce. WWW or the World Wide Web or just the web is a large network of interconnected computers. Here the users can create documents using HTML or the hypertext markup language and store these documents on web servers so that other users or the web clients can access these documents. And these documents can be linked together to other documents through pointers called as hyperlinks. E-commerce or the electronic commerce in the 1990s emerged as the major web application. 
information on the e-commerce web pages were data that were dynamically extracted from the DBMS when required. So here there was an interchange of data between the web and the database. Now XML or the extended markup language is considered as the primary standard for interchange of data between the web page and the databases. And so this is about interchanging data on the web for e-commerce. Next let us discuss about extending database capabilities for new applications. Some concepts of the traditional database applications were used by the developers of other types of applications that were developed later. Now let's go through few examples of database applications. The first one is the scientific applications that were used to store large amounts of data or the results from the scientific experiments. The next type of database application is for storage and retrieval of images like the x-rays, MRI, etc. Next we have storage and retrieval of videos and then data mining applications to analyze large amounts of data. Another example would be the spatial applications that store geographic data like the weather information. Next the time series applications that store data at regular points in time like for example the daily sales information. The basic relational model were not suitable for these applications that we just discussed because of one or more of the following reasons. The first one is more complex data structures were needed for these applications. Secondly, new data types were required. Next, new query language was necessary to manipulate these new data types. And finally, new storage and indexing techniques were needed for these applications. Since the basic relational system was not suitable, that led the DBMS developers to add functionalities to their systems. Some functionality was like incorporating concepts from object-oriented databases into the relational systems. And other functionality was in the form of modules that are optional. Like for example, we just saw that the time series applications store information at regular points in time like for example the daily sales information. So users could buy a time series module to use with their relational databases for their time series application. Because we just learned that the basic relational systems are not very suitable for many of these applications. So we get them in the form of modules to use with the relational databases. And that is about extending database capabilities for new applications. With this we come to the end of this video. Hope you have understood the brief historical overview of the database applications and how these applications provided a stimuli for new types of database systems. Thank you.